Um, and hey, Brooke. Hi. Are we expecting? Oh, here's Jason. Good. Hi. Sorry. Great. So, um, <clears throat> call the meeting to order. It's 102. Um, I'm going to accept the agenda as submitted, and I'm going to read the announcement. This is Mickey Rowland, chair of the Historic Structures Advisory Board, for maybe to confirm that all the members and persons that participated on the agenda are present and can hear me when I call your name. Please respond in the affirmative. Lucy? Yes. Angus? Here. Brooke and Jason? Aye. Yes. And I don't see any staff. Um, <clears throat> so no, and no anticipated speakers. This open meeting of the Historic Structures Advisory Board is being conducted remotely pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021. For this meeting, HSAB is convening by video conference via Zoom app as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Participants may find information on the conduct of that meeting at that location. Please note this meeting is recorded and each vote taken will be by a roll call vote. Okay. <clears throat> so, first on the agenda at night, I thought maybe we had done this, but maybe we haven't done it all together. Um, 10, Lincoln Ave, and we've all, I don't think we've reviewed the changes together. Um, I'll, I'll share my screen right here. <clears throat> so this is 10 Lincoln Ave. Um, we reviewed it before they had the gable dormers on it and he's changed those to And dormers, which is pretty similar to what was there. Um, you can see the existing north. Um, I guess they've made them just a little taller. I think if yeah, you they broke at, the roof line. Yeah, exactly. Before they were a continuation of the same pitch. I don't really mind this. I think it's it's better than the gables. It's less. It's less busy. Um, it's not a major change from what was there before. He's also done as we suggested is to shingle sides of this um, balcony railing. Um, he made some changes up here. Forget what they were. <clears throat> we don't see the old revision, the old submission. Well, I think it was a bank of doors up there. Okay, was it all French doors? It was all okay. French doors. Yep. Oh, and he did add the chimney, which we asked for, which was nice. So I think that's a good thing. Uh, all right. Um, anybody have any uh, any thoughts about this one in particular? Well, it, aren't they proposing to move it closer to the street? Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. There is a proposal to move this, so yes. I mean, I think in that neighborhood, um, you know, these are large houses and <clears throat> with the bulk that they are, I mean, let's have a little grace and sit back from the street. Yeah. And it's, it's already, I mean, it, now it's, it's really in line with the existing houses, unless these have changed. Is that possible that these have? Well, Ray made a comment about, uh, let's see where it is. 12. 12 Lincoln moved, moved forward. Did it? Yeah. Yeah. And so they want to be up with 12. Okay. Uh, I agree. I agree with you, Lucy. I think it should stay where it is. There's plenty of yard back there. Okay. Let me read what Ray said. When the house at 12 Lincoln moved forward, the argument was that it would be no more forward than this house. Now they want to move forward, move this forward. He's opposed to the move um, at all. And, uh, and he said the second curb cut on the front lawn mars the beautiful front lawn. Oops, on the front. So I don't see two curb cuts, but is that a change maybe? I don't know. 
Um, I, mean, I would just hate to see this neighborhood. Everybody's up against the street and then you got all this yeah, yeah, going on in the backyard. Yeah, I think I, I agree. Don't move it forward, <clears throat> leave it where it is. They don't seem to need to move it forward for their program, so why do it? Is the second curb cut in the back? Um, you know, oh, it's yeah. in the front, the front they want to make, the parking in the front. The existing it, it's not existing parking in front now? Um, it says on the plan, future driveway in the front and the um, existing- In the back, it says existing gravel driveway off to be the new. Yeah. Okay, so here it is, and there's we can definitely see there's no driveway in the front. So that's another one, yeah. These are all large houses on large lots, and um, you know the the proportion of front lawn, um, it's it's proportional to to the rest, the lot and the houses. Yeah. Uh, that's the way they were planned out. I mean, look at twelve now. Is that a is that a current? view yes yeah i mean that's obscene well and the parking in front of the house like that's obscene too hey, hey let's let's keep our comments a little bit more well it's just that like, that goes to the front yard the whole idea of the front yard and how these were originally laid out yeah um i really appreciate the um, changes as far as putting the chimney back in and changing some of the fenestration, um, the gable dormers going, um, you know, back to the sheds that have historically been there. I would much rather see those sheds be uh, another six or eight inches lower so that the upper part of the gambrel doesn't get um, broken. Uh, it, if it's about keeping the pitch, it seems like that would be a small thing to give if you go to the elevations. Guys, yeah, there you go. I was just going to just, I lived in this house just as an aside, Mickey, if you're uh -huh. looking for any comments about the history. Right. Um, this is 10. My bedroom was up there on the left. <laughs> and the one next door was moved at 12. That was actually part of this house that came off the back of this house. The one at 14, the flat roof came off the right side of this house. This house owned that entire area um, before they split it all up back in the 20s or 30s and they cut off those pieces. Um, they did, um, they are rearranging this. As you see, the chimney went back. They took the awful gable dormers off the front. The only thing they haven't done here is shingle the front deck. And there was a lot of comment about the upper story about down here with all the doors. I believe they've changed that to some extent. Uh, that when I was in that room, it was always a bank of windows completely all the way across. That was why I was up there. But the biggest issue was the rear with the uh, French doors. And I believe they make some, they're making some changes there as well. Okay, thanks Linda. But there was a lot of concern at the HTC about moving it forward and how far forward it was coming. Because when they split them all up, um, my friends at, ten, at eight, 10, 12 grew up with her, and 14 were all lined up in a straight line, but they did move 12 forward when they put the new foundation under it. Uh, the issue was how far forward this was gonna come and there was no support for it to coming as far forward as originally planned. So I don't know where it's, how far it's coming forward now, but those were pretty much where they stuck was on that deck, on those dormers and on the thing in the back. Now, it looks like they're submitting an alternate. Yeah, and I think that addressed a lot of it. I don't know about the rear. Well, there. this just, the difference being these gable dormers versus the sheds. Um, I think I prefer to see the sheds personally. And it has um, something up there now, so it wasn't Gable, that's for sure. No, they're right here on the right. Those are the old shed doors. <clears throat> so board members, any any comment about the Gable versus the, the shed dormers? Definitely go with the shed. It's historically been there. Uh, uh, my suggestion is to just down at that little bit so that it's dormer hits at the, uh, at the at the break of the high and low pitch of the gambrel. Agreed. 
Say that again, Angus. I kind of missed a little. If you bit. look in the profile, the top of that um, of those shed dormers is hitting just above the line of the break, and and I think it should hit at the break. It doesn't have to be a continuation of the same shallow pitch, but I think it would look a lot better if it were hitting at the um, at that eave line of the upper roof. Yeah, so that, was, so that would mean dropping. It's already a three pitch. I'm not sure we want to see it any shallower. So it would probably just mean dropping it down. It looks like there's a little bit of room to do that. Uh, that's what I'm thinking. It's a, a minimal thing where the sill would come down to the roof and the upper roof would come down to the, the eave of the upper roof. Yeah. I mean, I could slide it out there. further, but I don't yeah. know if you want it sticking out in anchor. But let's just say lower the, <clears throat> lower the, the entire shed roof to align with the break in the gambrel. <clears throat> I think that's why it is now. Well, now it's a continuation, isn't it? So it's well, by default. Oh, okay. That? I think. I could it? be wrong. Yeah, so it's the same run. So hinge it from the same place as what's existing, but then, you know, raise it, whatever to that three pitch that they've got now. Yep. Like I mean, preferably four, but if they need more headroom. Okay. Um, any other thoughts? Yeah, I still have a problem with uh, that bank of uh, French doors in the back. So do I. Yes, and also I do have um, an issue with the removal of that window in the front of the house being replaced by a balcony with a door. Yeah. What's the date of this house? 1902. I, I, I hate to see these tweaky little changes when you could keep the original material. Yeah, I'm like, I'm kind of mixed on this front door balcony thing. I think it's something we've certainly done a lot of and allowed a lot of and some of them are historical, I think. A um, lot of them aren't. A lot of them are not, certainly. And it's modest. It's not like they're turning the entire front porch into a, um, a balcony, which is- If it's completely shingled, it's going to obscure the, you know, the, the French doors being above the front door facing the street. Would you prefer that? We had suggested this combination pattern, but do you think it's, it would be better all shingled? No. Yeah. I, you know, I think those, those should at least be 12 light doors. Um, what about it being shingled half the wall and, and still baluster, but, but not like, you know, full length balusters? I mean, halfway down the from the vertical? Yeah. Across, yeah. All right. Why? Um, it just feels so open. It's more. like straight on deck on the front of a house. It's. I thought that was discouraged, like straight up, but. I don't get the feeling they really care, you know, about this one. He was perfectly willing to change it from baluster to shingle. I doubt that it makes that much difference to them to sh how much of it is shingled and balustered. So she went lower half of the balustrade area. Um, curious is, is that, is that, are those windows there before those little four lights? Yes. Yeah. Okay, they, that's not a change at all. Okay. Okay, so my comments um, were the revisions are, are much appreciated. It would be helpful to see the Oh, so we did see that. Um, the south facing third floor window door unit is still too much glass. That's up here. The windows should be reduced in size to create at least a foot of shingles between the doors and the windows. That shouldn't be that hard. The French doors on the front should be changed to 12 light with a kick panel. Um, and I didn't add 
I didn't talk about this back part. I just felt like this probably wouldn't be terribly visible um, unless it is. It is. It's, it's, it's very right calm. Okay. Um, and if it's not moving forward, it's even got more, more of a presence. So what do we want to suggest there or just say it's still too much glass? Just to figure it out. Too much glass. Yeah. Too much glass on the Sabbath. Yeah. That works. Okay. <clears throat> Any uh, Anything else to add to this one? Well, don't move it forward. Yeah. So I also have my, in my notes, don't move it forward. No front driveway. Um, keep the shed, uh, well, lower the... Yeah, oh, stick with the shed versus the gable dormers. Start there. Um, and lower the shed so that the top of the shed aligns with the break in the gambrel. Shingle the lower half of that balustered rail and too much glass in the south elevation. Good? Yeah, you know, I, I would. So may I just talk about the driveway for a sec? Yeah. Um, you know, number 10 got a driveway. Uh, in the front. And I think if they get rid of the rear driveway and they don't move the building forward, then having a front driveway would, you know, I, I don't think it would create, um, you know, that much of an issue. And uh, I don't know that, it, I mean, there's, the, I guess my point is there are a bunch of buildings up there with driveways coming in on that side. Uh, number 10 doesn't have a, a second driveway. Right, um, so that, that second one goes away. The back one goes away. Yeah. You, you know, I think if they want the front driveway, then they got to get rid of the back driveway. Wouldn't you rather have it in the back? The driveways oh, would I rather have it in the back? Yes. But, um, you know, number 10 has theirs in the front. And so. This, this is number 10. 12 has what, theirs. Number in the 12. Front. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Number 12 has theirs in, in the front. And it was approved that way. And, um, you know, I think that saying that they can't do that is just not really uh, consistent. Well, I think your point of if they're uh, basically getting only one driveway. Yeah, one is or good. the other. Yeah, no two driveways. Well, it's taking what were these, you know, great front yards and uh, paving them, you know, for the driveway and then and then you then you get cars parked out in front of the house, which really detracts from the house. If if it's possible, I mean they've already got a garage and a driveway in the back. I I'd rather them not put a driveway in the front. And I think it was a mistake to to have it um, changed on number twelve. I, I kind of agree. I think I'd so much rather not have a driveway in front. Um, I wouldn't be averse to it. I mean I'm just I'm trying to you know, see it from a, a consistency standpoint and the HTC having approved something prior to it. Yeah. You know, we certainly can make a recommendation. Um, Mistakes don't need to be. All right. Continue. All right. Here, here. Thus, thus spoke it. <laughs> Let's see what they're asking for. Um, but either one or the other at the very least. <clears throat> so this is the existing driveway in the back. And no, it says to be removed. So to be removed. They're wrong, wrong. So they want to put the garage. That means they're putting a garage right next to the house. Instead of in the back. Is it a tradition? Or is it existing garage to be relocated? Why not just leave it all in the back? I'm okay with that. Subdivision. Yeah. So not. Um, okay, so I'm sticking with what I got. We before we said don't move it forward and um, keep the driveway in the back and the garage and the garage. Yes, which will come later and garage or maybe not. Okay, can we move on? Yes. Yep. All right. Uh, this is. Stone Alley. Uh, again. It got pretty beat up at, uh, I represent the guys over there, but not, not the applicant. 
it got pretty beat up at um, HDC. Why um, wouldn't it? It's been getting beat up for six years. Yeah, yeah. And like, well, going on four now, but it, uh, it got beat up. There were a lot of suggestions made. Um, I don't know, it hasn't been back since then. So do what you gotta well, do. But yeah, I don't it's... hesitate to talk about it if Matt's not here. Well, we're I, gonna, we have to. We have to. I would like to say something if, if it's possible, Mickey. Yeah, go ahead, Diane. We have done this for four years. For four years, we have told them how we would like to have it done. For four years, it has come in, whatever architect happens to be on the papers at the time, to come in exactly the same way. It has not gone south. It continues to go east. I don't know how long one has to review a thing where they do nothing that they've been asked to do. Small stuff they've done, but that's that south elevation is there. There's no additive massing. There's no one story stuff. It's still a huge clunk on a on a roadway that does not have such chunky things. And you've lost the, the old old historic frontage. And I I don't know, but I don't know how we we the HTC make them do it or we just keep on listening to it. I think you just have to be firm. You just have to just say no, we're not taking it. If you want to bring back revisions, you can't stop them from bringing them in, but you no. don't have to approve them. So just just keep telling them the same thing you've been telling them. You look at the existing and the, the proposal, they're, they're the same, they haven't changed. Yep. So we do, that, that's what we've been doing, but. Yes, good. Well, we, we appreciate that you're doing that because it's really, I think they just eventually have to, I don't know, maybe, maybe <laughs> they've got to give up at some point <clears throat> and give us, give the HTC what, you know, would be appropriate. So they can right. deny it legally. Legally, they can deny it due to lack of response to the concerns expressed, and that's usually what town council requires. But they keep giving them a chance because they have a new architect. You know, they have a new designer now mm -hmm. because they got rid of the other ones, and now they have Matt. So this is Matt's, I think, first or second foray into this, mm -hmm. not having had any of the history of the last three or four years. And so this is his shot at it. And it got beat up pretty good, just like the other ones, though we have real drawings now. We never had real drawings before. So this is where it is now, but they could keep going here, but they could also deny it due to lack of response to the concerns expressed. And that's pretty much the only way to go. If well, hopefully the HDC will, will deny it because the issues have been the same all along and the response has been the same along and the comments have been the same all along. So. Well, isn't the applicant's the homeowner, not the architect, right? So if it, then it goes back that there hasn't been adequate changes made basically by the homeowner. I True. think the, the homeowner homeowner's doesn't... relying on, on Matt. That's the problem. They relied on the previous ones. And they relied on Matt. And I'm, we still have never really ascertained whether or not all the problems over the last four years have been actually adequately transmitted to the owners. Uh, we're pretty sure well, it wasn't the, before. Look at the HDC submission on the top left. It says the east elevation demolition, east elevation previously submitted. What is the difference between the previously submitted and the proposed, uh -huh. except for that extra roof there? Otherwise, it's exactly the same. It's very the much window the is a little bigger. Yeah. It's, it's, so what is it? And the next one down, the south elevation. What yeah. is different that we that we keep reviewing? It it's not getting changed. No, it it absolutely is not. And that's kind of what I'm saying in my I'll, I'll read my comments, which is basically the same as before. So it, the only significant change is that the rear ridge has dropped a little and the additions have slightly moved away from Stone Alley, but not enough. So little has changed that HSAB is, is resubmitting our comments from last time. The proposed additions are still too much, sorry, still too much too massive for the scale of this house. The rear ridge is at the same height as the existing main ridge and needs to drop 
The stepped addition beyond that should be changed to a one-story element or eliminated entirely. There is too much building attached to the back of this relatively modest home. The existing glassed in porch is visible from Stone Alley and Union Street. It is an, an important character defining element and should be retained. The existing exterior chimney should also be retained. The proposed drawings should show the proposed grade changes and maybe they do now. They do. Um, the HTC and HSAB have been very clear from the start that any additions to this house need to be sensitively designed to complement the scale of the existing house. HSAB would like to see further revisions. <clears throat> The topo shows that there's an eight foot elevation uh, change. This isn't showing the existing grade though. This is what we've asked for, right? So it shows it's still it, on the left. it shows it's... it on the left here. If you go to the thumbnail on the left and you can see how much they've added to the grade, but what they didn't do is show the dotted grade underneath the grade that they've added. Right, so they need to show the both. Things. Yeah, we need to see them both in the same drawing. That comes down right behind the uh, people that I used to represent that sold because they were afraid of this. It comes right down on top of the house. It's the two houses that are down on Union Street and it is perfectly, absolutely visible, this whole existing elevation. It's mm -hmm. going to loom. It's the thing with this house is that it's, it's got a, I had a hundred page history. I don't know if any of you ever saw it. Holly has it. It is the only house that is actually under the top of the bluff from here all the way down to Cumberland Farms, basically. Everybody else is fronting on our, on uh, Orange Street and they're up on top of the bluff and everybody down on Union, down below Quantity Bluff are fronting on Union Street. It is the only structure on that section of bluff going south, I guess, that is in between the two, which gives it a very large presence from right. Stone Alley and from Union Street. Well, it's historically significant is what you're saying. Absolutely. And there just it's hasn't been a, a proper response with the reduction of the massing of this addition. So well, it's a tail right. wagging the dog, basically. Yeah. Mr. Okay. Chairman? Yes. Hi, Ginger. Uh, this is Gin Hi there. Uh, this is Ginger. Um, yeah. the. I'm not sure that the uh, applicants have even investigated uh, how they would practically support um, uh, a, 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 the structure on top of uh, what's there because this is the edge of where, Linda's quite correct, it's where the edge of Quantity Bluff was dug, whereas uh, the house across the street, one and three Stone Alley, uh, have been sitting there since 1720 before Quantity Bluff started to get dug out. So, um, uh, you know, the, uh, it's it, like Linda says, it's the tail wagging the dog. It's, we don't know how practical this used to, uh, this is. There used to be um, sort of two terraces as you went down the hill and um, those have become obscured by vegetation, but um, as, in terms of what the actual grade is, I don't know. The, the, the line of uh, cypresses that go along the north side uh, were planted um, uh, in a berm, which is a, a berm re basically replaced uh, the retaining wall that used to be there. It was a retaining wall and a picket fence. And what happened to them or exactly when, I, I can't say. But um, the, the trees and the berm went in and uh, uh, between um, application number one of the same plan and application number two of the same plan. Uh, they planted them one day and then they weren't big enough, so they came back the next week and planted bigger ones. Mm -hmm. And because the trees don't actually show in the, 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 the current plan, I think, you know, they might consider why they were planted at all, um, uh, in, including the fact that uh, at least one of them is sitting on top of the old asphalt driveway, which is still visible and it's not covered with snow, um, uh, on the, uh, you know, on the east side. I mean, we know it will hold up a car, but will it hold up a house? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it, gets, it gets very steep as you go further south. Where, 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 there's a you know, a small retaining wall that holds the, uh, you know, the, the upper part of the lawn. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And uh, somewhere still in the file, there should be a, an actual picture of Levi Starbucks Barn showing um, uh, what it was like when Quantity Bank was being dug out. Um, so that might be uh, interesting to look at too. I don't know if that's in here or not, but here's some old pictures and new pictures. Okay, thanks, Ginger. Um, anybody else want to add to this? It's pretty much more of the same. Not much has changed at all. Um, I think we can we can probably move on. Okay, next, which is thirty feet thirty four B Walsh. My answer, no. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Moving on. Is that it, Brooke? That's, that's it. A, that's pretty concise. Yep. <laughs> um, okay. Is there somebody actually, oh, there. Is somebody representing this application? I don't think it's not. I thought it's somebody was here. What's all the right. date of this building? <clears throat> Can't be that old. All right, so let's start. Um, here is what they what is existing. <clears throat> and here's what they're proposing. So yeah, this is a, this is a massive change. Um, you want to hear what I have to say and then you can add to it. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, this house will be visible from Wall Street and also probably from Grand Point Road. <clears throat> Grand Point Road. I think there's actually a driveway spur or a spur of Grand Point Road that, depending on how you look at that, will be very visible from. Um, the uh, okay. I had a comment about the windows, but we'll come back to that. Um, some effort should be made to reduce the massiveness of this house. The second floor plate should drop down to the window headers. Um, the central third floor dormer should be eliminated. The plate height of the rear wing facing south um, which is I guess this this gable here the plate height of the rear wing facing south should be lowered to create a one and a half story wing, not a full two stories. The north facing fenestration should be more uniform and organized as you might expect on the front of the house. The exposed trusses on the front portico should be shingled over or changed to a more simple shed roof. The skirt board should be broken up with more defined piers or panels. Uh, the long shed roof facing west is too long. That's on this side, but this is the profile of it. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Is uh, too long and out of scale. The skylight is not appropriate. The third floor mullion windows should be singles. These guys here in the gable ends. Um, and we'd like to see revisions. <clears throat> so, you know, there are two story buildings in the neighborhood. Um, I didn't really want to focus on the main mass of this being drastically changed, um, but I think that it should have more additive massing and the rear masses should, could be dropped a little bit lower. And, and for that matter, the front mass could be dropped a little bit lower. So what do you guys think? Brooke? Um. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, in general, I agree with what you say. Um, I think that a one and a half story building is more appropriate in the in this area. I know that there are a couple of two story buildings on Wall Street, but predominantly they are one story and one and a half story structures. Um, and I think that um, this uh, this is definitely uh, going to loom over the road, especially with the uh, flood elevation requirement. Um, the third floor dormers, you know, I, I think that's um, definitely uh, just uh, not appropriate, makes it uh, appear very tall on the road. Um, 
and I think it just overwhelms uh, the site and the street. Um, so those are my thoughts. So you're saying try to get it down to story and a half and get rid of the third floor dormers. Yeah, well, I, I guess they go hand in hand. Sorry. True. Yeah, yeah. Um, Angus, uh, anything else, Brooke? What's that? Anything else? Uh, no. Angus? I agree with what's been said. It just feels <clears throat> way supersized. Um, and the domination of the roof with the dormers just is, it's just like three and a half stories. It's just way, way too yeah. large. Yeah. Okay. Lucy? Um, I think the fenestration needs a lot of help. Um, west elevation. Um, and um, I think that mm -hmm. two sets of French doors on the south elevation is too much. Um, uh, and I, with your proposal of having the third floor with only a single window on the east elevation, mm -hmm. um, I don't like the, you know, that would leave sort of three, two, one on that side of the building. The windows on the first floor should be stretched out. Um, mm -hmm. um, I don't know, if north elevation, would those AC units be visible? And the skirt should be natural to weather. Um, that's all for now. We would wanna see this back. Definitely. Jason? I agree with everything you all have said. It just looks like, let's see how much stuff we can stick to it. It's just very chaotic and yeah. everything but the kitchen and the kitchen sink. Yeah. Just a couple of comments, Mr. Chairman. Sure, uh, go ahead. This is, yeah. a former, this is a former client of mine. Mm -hmm. and I saw him last winter. He said he was doing something. I just don't know who this designer is at all. But um, the, the, all the houses on that little thing, it's not on Wall Street. It's one, one section back. Yeah. They're all two stories, especially the one that the first one in is a very large structure. And I know they're going to be coming in and doing stuff themselves. They're uh, behind other structures um, between them and Wall Street, which are also uh, two story structures of some ilk. It's already um, a story and a half. And I know they have more kids now, <laughs> but uh, that one's going to be going up. Is that's going to be changing as well? The one in the middle is, uh, I think, just got sold. I looked backyard of that for something, and then you've got this one, which is at the very end of this little thing. And we've always tried to figure out what this thing is, and this appears to be an easement and not a road. So it, it, may take on a different it may take on a different character than you would think it was because it's sort of this anomaly down on Grand Point where it's like a driveway easement and that's it. It's not a road. So the visibility <laughs> technically would be from Wall Street and you got to see it behind. But I think what the HDC members should do is definitely go down and take a viewing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Definitely take a viewing. Um, yeah, I kind of, you know, I've, I, as I looked around on, on Street View, I could see that there seemed to be quite a number of two-story buildings. I don't know, um, hard to, definitely, this looks like story and a half, story and a half, probably story and a half at 32. So there's a mix of, you know, it just seemed like <clears throat> there's already precedent for some two stories. The fact that it was not right on Wall Street was a positive for me. It's really these people's backyard. Um, so the, f the whole first floor seemed to be somewhat concealed by the row of houses in front. Um, but it's still, it's still pretty chaotic, um, disorganized, and, and, and you know, overall just plain too massive. So I think we can try to tone it down um, in scale to some degree. Mickey, I would also like to add that just because other people in the neighborhood could possibly be doing work. 
then there's no reason for us to approve stuff. No, I, I would and agree with that. Um, you should be setting a precedent. Right. Yeah. Nick, uh, can I ask? Can, Nikki, can I ask you whether are the windows fenestration are they up for uh, removing, or you know, are they? Are we working partly with existing and partly additive? It looks like keeping some existing. At least looks like these white shaded ones are existing, and the darker gray ones are the new ones. Okay. <laughs> Because they have an awful lot of mold windows, and they, they do. They they do, and I got you know I kind of felt like are these windows too small? I mean, they look the scale of them just doesn't look right. Right, there's something wrong with them, and they look like eye drops or something. You know, they just they look like spots ah. on the side of the building, not windows. I know it's very, and they're pretty chaotically placed. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I just wanted to ask. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So we've we've commented on the windows. Well, I'll add that also to <clears throat> window size. And and you want it back, right? Yeah. You definitely want this one back. Yes. Okay. And we okay. want to know the date of the building. That would be helpful. It's uh, 1987 okay. was on the application. Okay. No, I didn't see that on here. It's, it's new. All right, let's move on to 10 Angola. Is that right? No. Oh, well, yeah, but that's not it. There's yes. two in front of me, but she just had one of mine up, but there were two in front of me, which I'm fine to wait for. Well, let me um, let me find 10 Angola. I thought I had it up here, but I don't. I must have missed it. Uh, <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> this is an interesting one. This is, what is the date of this building? It's, it's not that old. Um, no, it's like 1973 or 1974 or something like that. Yeah, 73. Um, <clears throat> it's sort of an awkward building to start with, with the garage and this original open porch above the garage. And you can see the way that roof was originally done was a shed with some legs on the porch on the deck. And then, the, but they shingled the front wall of it to conceal the profile. Um, <laughs> weird. <clears throat> so this is what, you know, currently this is all shingled and like, did you submit in it? I don't guess we don't see existing drawings. But yeah, they're right there. Original house plans from 1973. Right, but they don't show it the way it is now, which you can see in the photograph has this. Yeah, it's not open. It's a room. It's a it's a wall. It's a, it's been closed in. There it is here, oh. with windows. So now she wants to open it all up. How you know Angola? You can't go on Street View on Angola Street, so I can't really tell. This is off the road a little bit. It's totally visible. visible. Totally visible. Totally visible. The whole yeah. front of the house. I'm mm -hmm. sure it is. And it's kind of looming because you look up the hill at it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you're looking up at it. Oh, I see. It's 1974. Right. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, award thoughts, anyone? I think well, what about, I was going to say the side light on the front door. Yeah. Awkward. Looks like something's been left off. That's like with the long hair on one side and shaved head on the other. Yeah, that's a good looking. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah, I think you had that back in the 80s, right, McLeod? <laughs> the right. sideways mullet. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I don't have a problem with making the windows <laughs> making them slightly bigger because the windows are kind of squat. Yep. Um, but I totally have a problem with opening that up again, if that ever did really truly exist that way, because this is fully visible across um, the land bank park that's there that was just 
part of it was rededicated, you know, Garden of the Sea. It's fully visible from Angola. It's visible from from over portions of it from over by the hand pony lot. And it's just not appropriate, especially that's a really historic street. Yeah. Um, so leave the porch enclosed. Yeah. Yeah, I can, I can, I think it is better. I mean, this is just plain, you know, it's just plain awkward. There's no two ways about it. It's, but it's probably less awkward shingled. Well, it's just basically putting, if you open it back up again, it's, it's a, it's it just not yeah. in the old historic district. Yeah. Um, so leave, leave that as it is. Um, they can change the windows. Um, I think the windows are actually an improvement because they were, they were plenty wide, but they weren't very long, which was yeah. awkward. And so this gives better proportion. Yeah, we didn't get very good photographs, but I, I, I agree with you. I think those windows are, they're all good. Front door's not, but the windows are. Ricky? If, yep. if, you, if you were gonna um, not approve the opening up of the, um, and putting the porch on, would you, for the existing um, wing, would you want those windows changed too? I think that naturally they would do that anyway. Yeah. yeah. They should, yeah. <clears throat> Nikki? Yes, bro. All right. Um, so <clears throat> as far as the porch goes, I mean, what if they, uh, instead of a gable um, porch, which looks odd as it is, what if they had like a, uh, just a regular lean-to wart roof, you know, off the side? I think it would look like it belongs a little bit more. Yes, it is an elevation change, and I think one thing that would be helpful uh, for this application is if they showed the grade line um, where it is relative to the side of, like if you're looking at that at the front door elevation, Nikki? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and if I can share it, I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Go ahead. All right. I'll stop. Go ahead. <clears throat> All right. Um, I think it would be helpful if they had a grade line shown there. Okay. Yeah. Because I don't think it would make this look as tall as it is. It, like if you go around to the side and it does, it steps back. Yeah. Um, and you can see where it does that on the side. So if you're showing a grade line relative to the, the garage, maybe that would be helpful for them. But um, but what I was thinking is, you know, if they had something just more like that. I think they'd have to hip it, Brooke, because I'm not sure a shed will work. Yeah, even, yeah, I mean, they could hip it or whatever, but I think it would just take away that 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 feeling of overwhelming uh, mass and odd uh, aperture. I don't think the grade line is that high. Okay. From when you're looking at it street, because it really, the driveway goes up, it, the drive, the garage door is, is way above the street. It really hits you yeah. in the face. It's very... The whole thing is awkward anyway, yeah. as it exists. I agree with Brooke about um, lowering that roof to, to make it less imposing and, and um, you know, more of an addition rather than it's just so high next to the, the high two story. But I do also agree with Mickey that it should be a, um, a hip and just keep that low eave line as it goes around. And it could, it could, you know, it could get shingled on the front and shingled on the side for like the first bay, but then it could open up to a deck. Yeah. The and back. then the second thing I wanted to ask, um, it says change out windows from uh, TDLs to Woodwright SDLs. So yeah. they're asking for uh, SDLs in the old historic district, which are and the Woodwrights are the Andersons. Um, you know, obviously, that part of the island is sort of borderline, but um, you know, basically everything across the street and into town is all true divided light. Um, mm -hmm. 
and everything down the road towards the pony field is true divided light. Uh, I think it would be the only building that was uh, Anderson STLs. So. Yeah, I think we should be consistent with that also. Right. Yeah. yeah. Stopping, stopping my share. So the other thing I wanted to suggest was, um, bring this back up, is um, if you look at the side view of this, see the, um, you know, this porch floor is flush with the floor level. You would think that they could drop that down. I don't know how much, you know, I mean, it's, it's all work, I guess. It's going to cost them something. But if they could drop that even eight inches, I think that it would reduce the shingle area here. It would increase the height here, which looks awkwardly short. Um, I think it would just help a little bit. This this big band of shingles is a, is, is a problem. It sure is. Yeah. So I was going to suggest that. Um, I was going to go. What with, elevation? What elevation are you talking about, Mitch? Well, it's it's on the front, which is probably north, but also revealed more. Um, on, there it is. Yeah. On the side of the garage. <clears throat> you can see the actual door. And this is a one, two, three, odd, oddly proportioned door lights. That's weird. Um, so that door should change. <clears throat> Anything, any other comments about this guy? Yep. All right. So I'm going to suggest that they they change this to a hip. They lower the floor, um, possibly oh, yeah. possibly shingle a couple of these bays along with the front. You can do it if that works. Bye. Okay. <clears throat> Let's the front on. door. The front. Oh, and door. yeah, I've got the front door already. Yeah, definitely the front door is awkward. What do they say? Yes, yeah, single side light in the front door is not appropriate. <clears throat> right there, yep. Okay. So now we're gonna go to Four Dolphin Court. Is that this one? Yep. Vicki, do you want that one back? Yes, actually. You want 10 Angola back? Okay. I, we, we do, and I've noted that also, but yeah, please, if you could make that come back to us. So okay. this. Thank you. This was built in 18, 1987. Um, it's kind of tucked in the back. Still going to be pretty visible um, around corners and maybe even from Easton Street. Are we going to we'll see the end of this, I believe? No, you won't. I think we will. My I, think we'll see, no. I think you'll see a little of the upper part of it. You cannot see it from Easton. It's too far away. There's too many things in between us and Easton. And you can't see it from um, the addition. It's going to be marginally visible. We're removing the driveway that goes into the property. Where are we here? Um, there we go. Keep going. Yeah, on Lincoln Ave. Right, yeah, we're still up there. That's not where we are. In my packet are the aerials. So you might as well go to the aerials in the packet and not this thing. I already yeah. included this in my packet. So I don't know where any of these came from. They're not mine. Um, this is, uh, and that's not the building, and that's not the building, and that's not the building. There's too many things in between us and that. Oh, but here's the building. It's there. I saw it once. Where are we going here? Right here. This is this is the building, right? No, it's not. I think it is. Absolutely that's... not. You have to go. You're going the wrong direction. First off. You're at 78 Easton Street. If you go to my aerial, you can see it. If you go to the packet. Okay, but we're looking from Easton to the back of the property. Okay. So that's, if that's not it, then it's the one next to it. So it's one of these two. Here's, here's I'm facing the road. Yep. North Beach Street is this one here, probably this one. And here's the building that you're referring to right there. Or maybe it's this one. It's one of them. But you'll see, I think you're going to see, I think it's this one. That's that yeah. one, Mickey. Yeah, I think it's that one right there. <clears throat> yep, the one to the left is one I designed a while ago. Yeah, that's ago. yours at the very end of Dolphin Court. 
Okay, so this is going to get you're putting an addition on the end of this, which is going to come out even further towards us. So we're definitely going to see that that is gable there end. Something wrong with seeing the gable end? I'm not <laughs> saying that yet. Um, so let's go to the drawings. You, I was, I was this was is going to convert. Can I make a presentation here, please? Go ahead. Sorry again. Part all three properties oh. are owned by the same entity. Six. Um, the the first two, the six and eight where um, Pete and Thea Kaiser's guest houses. Yeah. This was a private house with them. This is now being converted through the planning board to a part of the guest house complex. So it's going out to the left here and we're taking the driveway away from um, North Beach Street planting and that's going to be just a pedestrian walkway so that's pretty much going to block that the parking area in the middle is getting reduced by three or four times and going to be coming in the other side so this is going to be a pedestrian walkway that goes into it but they're going to have to get past these two buildings past another building which we don't have in here yet and all the way to the back corner which is where this addition is going on for dolphin court this is not in the old historic district as far as i know and, but it's in that area that you guys have taken over being able to uh, review. So uh -huh. that's why we're here. Uh -huh. So it's just a simple thing. It's not gonna be clappered like the front. Oh. The front is already clappered. We're not clapperding this. This is a shingle. Yeah. And it's set back behind the, um, the front facade of the other building, of the other half of the building. The stairs and all that stuff is already there. And that's pretty much all I got to say about it. The dormer does uh, meet the three foot setback on the right of the new addition. The back of it is not visible at all, period. Um, so that's pretty much it. This is getting much bigger. This <laughs> dormer is growing it is. a lot. If you could see it, I'd say it might be a problem, but you can't see it. And we have to put, you know, the, the door we're changing, fixing that. And obviously we have to rebuild the stairs at some point, but not right now because they weren't that old. Okay. Thanks, Linda. Um, anybody want to comment? Um, I was down there this morning. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see those buildings from Easton Street. Yeah. I think you'll see. The corner of it. Gable end. I think you'll see this end of it. Um, anybody else? Brooke, you're about to say something. Um, I'm getting there. All right, Angus. I have to recuse. I this is, belongs to a client. <laughs> okay, Jason. Um, I think it's oh, kind yeah. of big. Um, I think that dormer on that. The back side, well, both both dormers. The one that's on the mm -hmm. east is kind of stuck in the middle, but then that dormer, that massive piece, um, just making it even bigger. What already exists, which is not really mm -hmm. wonderful to begin with. Mm -hmm. So I do have concerns about that and visibility. Yeah, I am. Um... To me, and I don't know how much of this is visible at all from North Beach Street. I think Linda's saying it's probably not. Um, my suggestion is that this is, you know, there's no, it's not additive massing. This should be, <clears throat> this should be story and a half, this wing, especially coming off the side. I mean, if it was off the back, I would be less concerned, but it's coming off the side, it, I think it should be, because it just lengthens the building. It's how far it's, it's is it step back a little bit, about three or four feet? <clears throat> and it's becoming a commercial um, entity. It is no longer a house. And it's next across from the commercial stuff, um, our <sighs> Selvago property, the stuff on the corner. It's next to backs up to somewhat backs up to the Nantucket Hotel. You know, it's, it's commercial property. It's not a residence anymore. And you won't be able to see the entire length of it unless you're standing next to it on Dolphin Court. And even then it's gonna get blocked. 
So, and there's a tremendous amount of foliage that we're putting in. So I don't know, the rear is not visible from any publicly traveled way, that dormer that's big. Mm -hmm. It's already kind of odd because it's up there for access. And uh, if you can't see it, you can't see it. If you see it in profile, you don't know how big it is. I have a, I have a question. Um, right now there's a shell drive in between uh, the two, uh, the Atlantic mainstay and the other house. Yeah. yeah, six and eight. Yeah, is that shell driveway staying? No. Oh, okay. That's, That's going away and then it's going will away. this have its frontage on away. Dolphin Court at that point? Yep, it's just gonna be a little walkway with the uh, foliage. Nicely done so people use that as a oh. access. Oh, and it looks like there's a building that's being proposed there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's going to make it even. You're going to block yeah, it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I. All right. Um. Yeah, I'd say other than that gable end from Easton Street, which I think a fair amount of it will be blocked by those single-story structures. Like if you're walking down the road. Um. Yeah, I, I think visibility is severely limited. Um, mm. So, I mean, as boxy and uh, awkward as this is, I don't think we're really ever going to see all of it. I think we're going to see this view the most and just yeah. this upper part of it. Yeah. And this is where I can have, I, I do have some comments about this, is that the, the rear dormer, which you will see in profile, um, that should come down off the ridge a little bit. You know, that's that's not that hard to do. Yeah, that's standard fare. That's standard. Yeah, that's, I, even the I, other I mentioned it. I mentioned it. Good. Well, they're ready for it then. Um, uh, the rear dormer windows. I'm not sure if we'll see them. Um, no. Anyway, these guys are are inappropriate. They they should be changed somehow. We make them longer, narrower, or something. But the but they're just awkward proportions. Go to the existing on the left. I believe that's the existing on the left. I can't. Yeah, I yes, yeah, this, this, but they're replacing them so they could put in some good windows instead. Well, the problem is, Mickey. Look at the height of the floor. You can't get down too much farther because of the floor height up there, and those are um, rental then, rooms. Then make them narrower. You know, this is. Or do something, you know, something different. But we can, even we if can. you can't see them. Yeah, just to make it look right. I just I have a problem with us taking advantage of people that you can't see them and telling them to change something you can't see. It's That's for the it's, it's for the building. It's for it'll make the building look better. This is just awkward. And I'm not done. Um, oh, in the south elevation here. South. Okay. Which is right here. This to me feels really underfenestrated. It really wants to have another window in the middle, which it probably could. So um, again, if you can't see it, but I'll ask him about it. I don't know what's in that, that area. I think, I think you're going to see this one. This one, you think it may be a hallway. I'll have to find out what that is. No, it's part of a it's part of a living room or something. I, I looked at it. It's um, it's right here. I mean, there's a partition somewhere there. Yeah, the right in the middle. Yeah, but still, to put in two windows, one in the bedroom, one in the living room. <clears throat> so, anybody else? Nope. Moving on. Okay, that's four the, Okay. Eight North Beach Street. <clears throat> this is couched in behind the building, behind the addition already. And you can't see it from north from uh, Dolphin, period. Yeah, it's in, that it's in that little area right there. The only problem I had with this was the labeling of the drawing. What um, did they do? Well, this is north and south, right? Here's the north arrow. Here's mm -hmm. here's the north L or So let's say the front of the building is facing east, correct? Sort of. Sort of, but yep. most. Northeast, southwest. I, they always do that to me. Yeah, <laughs> but. Even if they just say east and west, here's it says south, which it's not facing well, south. Well, it's confusing. Yeah, I'll have them fix the cardinal points. That'd be helpful. Other with other than that, I didn't really. Does anybody have any concerns about this one? The addition is to the interior of the lot. Yeah, I actually think it helped. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I was all set to complain about this really ugly tall gable in the back, but I realized that's existing. Yeah. So we can't do much with that. These are both from the mid to late 80s. Yeah. And it never bothered me much before, so I just don't think it'll bother me much now. They're nice on, they've got a nice, both of them have a nice street presence on North Beach. They're just, they're yeah. sort of angled to the street and I don't know why that happened. I know, it's, it's, it is sort of interesting. It's, it's different, not probably, but anyway. Um, any concerns about this one? No. No. Okay. Thanks, Thank Linda. You. Next is 71 North Liberty. Uh, this is Ag. This I got I, the, the feeling that all the work is being done in the back of this property. So I think literally all they're asking for is, is in this back corner. And um, they've approved the pool already, I'm pretty sure. I have no concerns. I can't see it. Yes. I, I, I do have a few comments. Go ahead, Lucy. Um, let me see. Lighting. <laughs> what? Lighting. <laughs> OK. Um, they have, is the fencing around the property already approved? And if so, um, I, because it butts up to the park, yeah. it, uh, it should really be natural to weather. And um, they have a uh, arbor or something that goes into the park. Well, here's I, an arbor here. Do they have one in the back too? I, I, yeah. Is there one in the back or, let me see. Maybe well, they have this, per the pergola is, is in the back corner. Okay. Yeah, not, a, not the arbor, I don't think. Okay. All right. Well, the pergola, it, I guess what I'm saying is budding up to the park, it would be nice if all that stuff was natural to weather. Okay. I hear you. Because yeah. it's, you know, you're it's to rural stuff. <clears throat> yep. I agree. Um, and it would be nice on this, you know, you don't see the El Topo stuff on here. Um, But I guess that, and uh, what did exactly, everything, sorry. No, I, in that there's a, a stone wall going around. Is that all been approved? Oh, in the back here is a stone wall. Yeah. Let's see what they're applying for on the application. Yeah, that was my question. What exactly is being applied for? Demo existing failing pool, deck and pond. This, this, there must be a different application. Oh, here's the actual one. Bluestone oh. patio, stone wall, 18 inches tall. Fire pit. Pea stone and a fire pit. Ten like pergola. It says natural to weather. All right, Mickey, if you want to hold this, uh, Steve Thoreau didn't even know it was on today. He'll be on in a couple of minutes. So if oh. you want to hold it until he comes on, he can explain it because it does exist. It's just moving. It. So okay. Hold it for a few minutes. That, that's fine. We can come back to it. Um, okay. Thanks. So this is, oh boy. Um, I wish Val were here. <clears throat> so what are we thinking about this one? There's two options here, by the way. One is this huge hip roof going full length to side to side. And the other is just a simple shed still way out in front of the existing, doubling the depth of the porch. Um, we have historic photos. Yeah, we do. Um, I mean, it's literally exactly the way it was built. Yeah. I, I can't imagine changing this building, especially the way they're talking about changing it. It's just too iconic. It's too historic. There was a, I don't know the name of it. Um, is Mary here? 
Bergman, um, maybe uh, Oops. Rita's here. Um, I don't know, Rita, are you there? I'm just wondering if anybody knows the, the architect that designed this building. Um, I'm, I don't know off the top of my head, but we could look it up. Thank and, you. Yeah. It was somebody notable at the time. It was. I that Because I had to do the history on this structure a long time ago when the uh, <laughs> front porch went off, I think, in the no-name storm and floated down the street. Mm -hmm. I ended up yeah. doing something because of the awning for these guys. And it pretty much looks pretty much the way it was as exactly. far as the porch is concerned, which yep. is why they ended up extending the awning around the side and around the front. Um, I think what they want to do is do away with the awning, which gets ripped to shreds every year, and it's expensive, and mm -hmm. add the roof where the awning was. So I think it'd be, yeah, there you go. So the awning extends around the side as well uh, yeah. now, and um, I think that's probably what the thought was here, since they just got the new, the sandbar just renewed their concession. Yeah, I, I'm sure that's their thought. I know they're having trouble with the awning and who's going to pay for the new one, all that kind of stuff. Um, and this would be a more permanent solution, but I, I cannot stand behind this one at all. This is just too overwhelming. Um, it would totally change the character of this building. Looks terrible. It looks terrible. It would, it would, it, it, you'd totally lose this building behind that porch. As bad as the, you know, the annual awning that is put up, uh, as bad as that is, it, it does go away. It's not a permanent change to this historic structure. Yeah. Um, I, I would, yeah, strongly recommend yeah, not, not, not accepting this application. Yes. Yeah, I don't know what, what else to say about it, except that it's, it's all bad. Um, so I did say, this is an iconic historic structure designed by blank in blank year. It is still in its original unmodified form. Adding this enormous porch has completely changed, completely changed the scale and appearance of the structure and is entirely inappropriate. Other temporary adaptations need to be considered rather than permanently destroying this piece of Nantucket's history. Good. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. What do you think of the idea of, of attached a covered porch kind of thing attached by a boardwalk. That's, you know, separate structure. Oh, like Detached. a little uh, pavilion or a gazebo. Yeah, yeah. I think that's cool. Yeah, Do it I like that, that too. Way. And yeah. then that way you're not messing with the original material. The CONCOM and the state and everyone else would be all over it like a, like a cheap suit. Yeah, I, I think it'd have to really be to, to complement the design and everything. I mean, a permanent pavilion, it's a good, it's a good thought because it respects, the, doesn't hurt the existing structure, but it's got to work with it, you know? And it could be Might possible. be a good try, instead of just saying. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's worth a try. I mean, someone yep. could really do something that could look nice. You're right. Really add to it. Oh, it's begging for an architecture competition. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, okay. Perhaps a separate detached. Um, Moonville no. Natural Resources Building. Okay. Um, all right, so we were, we were moving on. And this one is six level place. We have Joe here. We no. Know. He was. He was. Yeah. Joe was here. Joe's here. I just spoke to him. Hi, everyone. Hey, Joe. I was muted talking to Linda. I apologize. There you are. Okay. <clears throat> Do you want to you bring this up? So this, uh, you saw last year, we were um, that's perfect. So the top left image was the initial application, and we add um, we added a mudroom kitchen ward, and we had a living room. But right now, my clients just want to rip off the roof and put the dormer in. They want to come back later, but um, they just 
timing for the contract, et cetera, trying to get the house lifted, it really has become problematic. So they just want to lift the roof, put in the dormers and leave pretty much. Oh, and do the, the front um, porch. So that's really it. So all I'm asking for is that those two added a massives uh, on either side of the uh, east elevation. So on the south and north would be removed for now, but we're probably gonna come back in a year or two and put that forward. Because right now what's happening is the, in that last um, huge storm, not this last past weekend, but a couple months ago, we lost a lot of roof shingles. There was water damage and we really want to protect the house so we don't have to gut the entire interior and remove all the rock plast rock lath plaster. Um, so that's why we're here. Joe, is this were these changes already approved by the HGC? Yeah, so the the north and the south warts were added onto. We're we're approved and um, yeah, we just right now we just want to eliminate those. And I think the building still stands on its own as is mm -hmm. without it. I mean, I, I, I prefer it with the additions, but we'll be coming, like I said, we'll be coming back in a couple of years. Do we have drawings of the existing? Uh, I now just photographs, sorry. Pictures, that's all right. Huh. What's it, Joe, what's the date of this? Um, it is, uh, I want to say 1930s. So, and this is already there. Are you, are you going to? Yeah, we're just going to leave all that. You know, maybe you know, there's a couple of boards that we want to fix, but um, but what we want to do is remove the roof and put the back dormer and those two front uh, dormers and the covered porch. Um, just mm -hmm. give them a little more light. You know, my only my only comment about this, you know, generally it, it looks fine, especially considering what's already been approved. Um, is right here. This bothered me. I mean, why not align these windows and make them all the same? It's oh, I get uh, that was in a bathroom. Um, I didn't want to go um, removing the first floor window, so you know, causing a lot of interior yeah. destruction and removal mm -hmm. of wall uh, in existing wall surface. So I left it where it was. Um, but I, I did, you know align the center with the side uh, jam of the uh, of the sash, which, you know, back if you ever look at the old HTC uh, guideline book, it, that's acceptable. So that's why I did align it in that way. What did, tell me that again, what did you align? So you, so if you take the center of A and you draw a line straight up, it yeah. now aligns with the sash on the right hand side. And that's a within the HTC guideline book. It's kind of a funny thing, but um, yeah, it's something I learned when I was at Design Associates. And that's a typical detail that you can do. I mean, nothing has to be totally aligned. And if you go around a lot of the houses in town, not mm -hmm. on the front, everything is very stacked on top of each other. But I think if you get around the sides, yeah, nothing is as organized. Um, and this is organized within the HTC guidelines. <laughs> I hadn't heard that one. Yeah, uh, I will find it and share it with you. Yeah, <laughs> I guess yeah, I was also- Not that we use that book anymore, but it's there. <laughs> we try to. Um, exactly. <laughs> how about some mullions in the, muttons in these windows? Uh, we can add those. They're not in there now, but we can add them. Yeah. There's a new if, window. You go back, if you go back to that original photograph, you can, or the yeah. photograph, you can see that that one has no, but I can add that. So is it a no change and keep the window? No, all the windows are going to be changed. Okay. So that was the other part of this whole application where we were approved to remove and replace them all. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, if you want to go up one more photograph. Yeah, that, no, that's not really. Yeah, that's all good. No, that one doesn't. doesn't. Yeah, sorry, you can't that's see right. it, but it, that's based off the, uh, the photographs I have. And so Measuring the existing conditions. Well, as long as you're putting in a new one, why don't you put some lights in it? Okay. Mickey, what's the age of the building? Joe? I think uh, 1930s, Diane, sorry. That's okay. It should be right there on that application. Yeah, I just see it now, sorry. That's all right. Is it here? I don't even see it. 
I, I'm sorry, I'm like uh, Steve Thoreau. I forgot this meeting was today, so. <laughs> That's all right. Um, no, no offense to anyone. I'm, you know, Joe, I, I get what you're, I, I guess I hear what you're saying about this peculiar guideline thing. Um, I'm still gonna leave my comment in there. I think it would look better if these, if these were more uniform. That's fine. Um, so I, I, board members, anybody else with a comment on here? Uh, my concern is about the windows. I mean, if they're original 1920s windows, I'm concerned about them being lost, but also, um, you know, the just like we were talking about Angola, the, the idea of something moving to um, SDL from TDL uh, in this area. Is that what we're doing? Anderson's, yeah. 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 Uh... There is an, uh, my contractor, if you, for the, my client had a conversation with a contractor and uh, there are Andersons on the street now. Uh, where on the street? Uh, at the end. At the end, the new building at the end? And the old. And the old new building at the end. Um, uh, uh, I mean, I, I would rather not have Andersons personally, but well, because I think they've we been approved. Mm, true, but yeah, I, well, we can we can no. still say it. We'll, we'll leave it. We in. don't have to approve it. Yeah. I, yes, that is true. Anybody else? Okay. I think we're good with this one, Joe. Okay, thank you. Have Thanks. a good day. You too. So this is Stone Barn. We got Steve uh, Thoreau here, Mickey. Oh, okay. Oh, Steve, hi. Wanted... Are, you, are you there? Steve Thoreau? I see your name. Yeah, I'm here. Good. So you want to tell us what's going on to this one? Pool there. And pool. It's already been approved. Uh, the pool was in the setbacks and did not conform to any zoning. Uh, we're pulling the pool forward. The new pool conforms to zoning. Uh, and we'll repeat zoning. Uh, screening is there. Initial planning was, re was required by the HTC for the approval. Uh, this application, it's also been approved by the Zoning Board of Appeals. It's already been done and we went through that already. This was just for Hardscape. We can the Hardscape plan on the left to the HDC. Uh, oh, it keeps cutting out. They said uh, that it, you know, they wanted to come back. They thought it was too much bluestone, so we reduced the amount of bluestone in that area. Considerably. And that's it. Okay, we're missing a little bit of what you're saying, but I think we can kind of see what's going on here. Um, the, the fencing that you're proposing, this looks like a new, oh no, it's not. Do you have a fence around the back? You must have a fence somewhere here. Yeah, that's existing, Mickey. It's a fence all the way around the property. And what is it made of? A fence with the post in the vegetation. Was it, was it, did you say wire fence or is it board fence? I couldn't hear. Fence, yes. So, still can't so, 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 okay, hear me, huh? <laughs> Try it again. Wire board. Wire. Said wire. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Um, okay. So the pr proposed pergola, will that be natural to weather? Yes. Good. Okay. Um, board members, Lucy, did you want to say something? Yeah, I'm, I'm interested in the outdoor lighting. The only outdoor lighting, Lucy, will be over the pergola for the outdoor dining and the regular in, in pool lights for safety. What are they, what's the lighting look like? Oh, your typical in pool light. You know, they come with the pools for safety purposes. Yeah. Like in the side wall of the pools? Correct, yeah. Yeah. And 
I, I'm concerned about how much lighting is going to be there in the backyard. I mean, we've got this whole dark sky thing that we're all trying to support now on the island. One light over the pergola for outdoor dining and that's it. Okay. But not a lot of pathway lighting or anything like that. Lighting now, it's just the fire pit that's there. There's no need for pathway lighting whatsoever. Um, the fire pit and the outdoor light will be enough light to maneuver around through there. Okay. Thank you. So I'm just going to note to minimize any new outdoor lighting. I think you have one comment, and that is that you know, due to the rural nature of everything that's behind this property. Mm -hmm. um, I appreciate the, the black and white version with the little bit of a, a curve in the wall just to soften it a little bit. Mm -hmm. This is so unusual with this sort of, you know, the undulation of the, the pool lines and the patio and so forth. I think that should get followed through with the, um, with that stone wall as well. Yes, if you look, at the original uh, pool that was there, that was the same similar shape. We simplified this shape in order to um, look like it was once there. The wall that was there uh, is really not needed uh, as a retaining unit. So we, we took part of that, create uh, more vegetation and we reused the new uh, the new wall at the pergola. And this is, is the park. And this is surrounded by vegetation of bamboo that's 30 feet tall. Um, let me see if I can find that one. What's the address here? 71 North Liberty? Yeah. The street is just the, again, the house and the driveway. 71 and 73 are owned by the same family. Now it's the arbor and the gate, are, are those are both are gonna be natural to weather too, correct? Natural to weather, all the, all the gates natural to weather. They've been approved by the HTC as type two already. Okay, thank you. So this certainly looks pretty heavily vegetated in the back. Extremely vegetated. Yeah. Oh, here it is right here. This must be the pool. Is this the pool? It would be the neighbor's pool. Oh. Sure. Okay. Doesn't look like that's ours, no. Yeah, all right. <clears throat> so I think Agus's comment about the stone wall is you know, I don't know how much we'll see of it, if any, if you went right up to the edge of this property, but um, uh, where do we go? Oh, I've lost it. Here we go. Um, but I kind of like the idea of softening these corners too. If it's at all visible, I think that would be more appropriate. Um, and do that. Um, it's not visible at all, but I could certainly soften the corners if you want me to soften the corners. That's fine. I think that would. Just in case you can see it, I think that's a good suggestion. I was just looking at the drawing to the left and and that curve is already in there. So I just thought that was a preferable. Yeah, I, I would agree. Any other comments? Nothing to add. No. Okay. No. But thanks, Steve. Yeah, sorry again. You know, I had no idea. But we didn't get any notification. And when I looked at the HDC uh, list for Tuesday, uh, I'm buried down the bottom of like three pages. So yeah. you probably won't see this at the HTC for a while, but we're we're right. we're ahead thank of you for your time, guys. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Thanks, Rick. Right. Okay, so um Stone Barn. We were just about to do that one. Here we go. This is just a shingle job going from three tab to architecturals. Um, too bad they're not doing wood. Yeah. No We're concerns. Safe. I got is, this it. In, is this in the old Stark District? It's not in the OHD, but it's within our purview. So. Um, no, well, because in the OHD, we tried to keep to three tap, not architectural, but that's all. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, there are some 
architectural colors that are allowed even in the OHD, aren't there? Yes, there are. It's just that in buildings that have got much, as much roof as this one does, this, the simpler it is, the better off, yep. I think. Uh, Moray Black is approvable and there's a gray that's approvable. We can't get that gray anymore. So Georgetown Gray is the other gray that they're allowing in the old historic district. Was there a cobblestone? Yes, gray? and they can't get it. Yeah. That so looks really great. Reason. From a distance, it looks like slate. Oh, I love cobblestone. It's my favorite color, but they can't get it. So right now, it's everybody's going to Georgetown Gray because that's the closest to cobblestone they can get. Is that just supply issues, or because they don't make it anywhere? Supply issues, uh, factory issues. You know, pretty much dovetails with the it, it, uh, the issue of getting um, shingles from Canada. Everybody sort of suffered during the um, pandemic, and for some reason, cobblestone gray bit the dust first. Huh. No longer made? No, I think it's still on their um, certainties uh, list, but the closest thing you can actually get is Georgetown Gray, hmm. which is very nice. It's subtle. This roof doesn't even look that bad. No. It's a big roof. <laughs> it is a big roof. OK, any concerns about this one? No. no. Yeah, me too. All right, next is North, uh, Beaver Street, same thing. I believe it's charcoal gray, charcoal black, charcoal gray, depending on if it's IKO or certainty or the other, I think it's the other gray. That is allowed? Yeah. Okay. I've got the list, but it's in my, it's in the other room in a folder. So same thing here, um, three tab, two architectural, this is in the OHD certainly. Um, but uh, Linda, I think you're saying this this is the color moray black is acceptable to the HTC. The color may be, but this, the tile is. <clears throat> Diane, are you saying it should still be three tab? Yes. I'm saying that that's what I think. It's in the OHD on the an old, simple building. Mm -hmm. And the architecture, no matter what color you color it, <clears throat> has more lines and definition than a single, than a uh, three tab. We probably don't know the age of this building. 10 uh, Beaver, I don't. Yeah, it's, it's odd because it's set back from the street. Yeah. We should ask. Yeah, it makes me think it's not that old, but it, you, we don't know. Um, well, a real estate ad said, I think 1929, but I don't know, I don't believe that it was all the time. Yeah, they, they don't always get that right. Um, what do we I want think to architectural hear? shingle is best from a distance. And that's part of the issue of the, you know, when you're in these core districts, yeah. that everything is up close and, I think sticking to the rule of the three taps better with this. Also, the architectural shingle, when it gets lighter, you know that I think that works better with architectural shingle. But the, but the, the black is just, it's a lot of, it's a lot of lines and a lot of black, mm -hmm. and I think it detracts from, from the historic nature of the house. Yeah, I think, you know the the lighter color, like the light gray in architectural, is is really bad because it's you see. Yeah, you see much more shadow, but you also see some weird coloring behind. It it's doesn't it's not done well. So I wouldn't go lighter, but um, still I I don't mind saying we we prefer three tab in this location in the OHD. Yeah, the town property card, which also has to be taken with a grain of salt, says nineteen twenty nine. Okay, so it's it's old. Yeah. It's not antique, but it's old. Okay. Well, it's almost 100 years old. Yeah. Yeah, that's old. <laughs> yes, indeed. All right. All right. Here's another one I had trouble figuring out. This is, um, is 19 Quaker. Um, so it's the new house that got stuck in behind the big house. Exactly. Big shop, sorry. 
Okay. Anybody figure out what they're applying for here? No. Oh, yes, they want to do a stone step and a stone stoop out the front. Got it. And on the side, they just want to have that half wall continue as opposed to a step out. So you can't get off the porch. Well, you what? can probably get off on the side. Right, but you can't get off on that side. Right. Okay, gotcha. All right, so there used to be a step here. In fact, it's still shown. No step. They're getting rid of this step and sh sh uh, shingled wall. Got it. I think that's an improvement. Yeah, I don't have any concerns with that one. Uh, on the front, though, I think that should be wood. I mean, it's it's very prominent. Yeah. And I think stone looks a little too modern. Um, you know, even though we're just on the outside of the OHD, I, I think it's it's close enough where I think a wood stoop is appropriate. I totally agree. I think stone is, is kind of contemporary. So um, I, I think it's a good one. So here's the steps they're eliminating in the back. Okay, any other comments? No. All right, to Holbert <clears throat> again. We did this one already. No, we did the one next door, I believe. Oh, I think we did this one too. We told her not to do curbing, did, did, didn't we? No, that was the one next door. They wanted to do granite curbing across the street. So no, we did that or right next door, yeah. Right next door and the curbing is in next door. So it got approved. I guess so. Really? Or doesn't mean it got approved. Or what? I was just saying it doesn't mean it got approved. People do do things without getting approval. I no. <laughs> I think our comments, you know, are would still be consistent that it's out yeah. of character with the neighborhood. Totally. Yeah, I, I think this is all about they don't want people parking in front of their house. Well, you're probably right about that. Let's see too. I mean, I, I think they could maybe put up a, a low fence or even if they wanted granite curbing, they could have it angled back away from the street. Well, it's really, I actually, a while ago when the application was for the other house, cruised down there and other than a few minimal spots of old curbing, like you can see right across the street there, mm -hmm. there is, there isn't any. No. Um, and that curbing sits a lot lower. Um, the house next door, the curbing must sit uh, four inches up from the road. Um, it's steep and it's it's got a sharp edge corner to it. Um, so this is all curb, is that what you're saying? Even though it's the old? Yeah, it is. All right. Uh, up to the wetlands. Yeah. That's too bad. Yeah, it is. It doesn't help us any. No. I mean, um, if this house has it, you know, if they've got the curbing next door and across the street. I know. There goes the neighborhood. There goes well, the neighborhood. Isn't curbing next door? Was that approved? Well, well that's, that's the question we should have. Yeah. And, Diane, do you remember that being approved? I don't remember it being approved. No, I don't. Um. And Mickey, could you zoom in on that on the house too? Uh, on the um, landscaping plan, they have um, um, a lot of stonework being done between the two structures. And I was wondering if that's already in there. Oh, I don't think we're going to see it here. I mean, you mean the street view? Yeah. yeah no, no, no. Back to what you were doing, you just had yeah. the aerial. No, this is as close as I can get. Well, it doesn't look like the patio is in there. Are they applying for a patio? No, but um, um, this outfit sometimes puts in things or doesn't. Mm -hmm. See there? I think that should be. Well, they're not applying for it now, are they? What are they applying for? The curbing. Just granted curbing, period. The charm of that 
street, Hobart Avenue, is is just how informal it is, and this just makes yeah. it really formal. I, I, I mean, if if the HTC is going to to if they've approved what's next door, and and you know they're talking about they're being granted across the street. If it had the eased edge and was two inches above the pavement, you know, and sort of resembled what's across the street, but. I hate the idea of of this being the new trend down mm -hmm. there. It just changes the character of the street. Absolutely. That those rough foundations. Mm. Yeah, I'm yeah, gonna yeah. still say um, we think. So I've got. I thought that we had already looked at this one, but you're saying we didn't. So um, this area should have a less formal, natural transition from paving to grass. The only property with curbing. This is, I guess, not right. Is across the street, and we don't want to see any more on Holbert Avenue or set precedent for others. Right. Thank you. Make, make note of what's across the street. That's not, you know, a sharp curb eight inches high. Yeah. Well, this is about four four inches high, I think. That's next door. Across the street, it's pretty much flush with the. Yeah. yeah it's it's probably an inch and a half or two inches, as I remember. Well. Um, that would be better than a than a high raised curb with sharp edges. With sharp edges, definitely. I'd also like to point out that um, we've had some changes on the street side of some of these properties down here. I'm thinking of the large one that's on Easton Street down towards the Coast Guard Station that they wanted to do the large pieces of granite for their um, driveway skirt. Yes, and. I just hate to see just, you know, the, the granite creep through the neighborhood. Yeah. I don't think they allowed that one to be. Um, oh, I hope not. Uh, the steps, the big blocks. So um, uh, should we want to add anything to my comments or just let it go with that? I, I think that, um, th that if it, someone should look into if the granite curbing on the adjacent property was approved? That's a good question. <clears throat> okay. All right. I wonder if that, how hard that would be to find. I guess like we can't do that. <clears throat> All oh, right. Holly could do it. Holly could, you're right. Um, okay, next. 62 Walsh. Lisa's not here. No concerns. Yeah, I, I only had a little concern here. I mean, this is obviously fine. What was there on the step change? Um, change this right here there was a door you could see there yeah and now it's just a shingled wall i was just going to suggest that they um, it would be nice to see a couple small six light sash on the east facing shed separated yeah yeah they get any more mold windows it'll yeah we don't want like that. a hotel i agree Separate. yeah need something yeah good all right next <clears throat> oh yeah, 82 Center Street, no one here. Um, so first question is, how visible is this from Gull Island Way? Lane. I think pretty, pretty. Are there photos? There really aren't. Well, there are, but not, not useful ones. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Jeez. Is this Phil Austin's mother's house? <laughs> um, I don't know. It's right next to American Seasons. Yeah, I think it's her house. He used to work in the post office and he's still here. Huh. So where are we? His sister married to Larry Harry O. Paul Harry. <laughs> Can't see. Um, yeah. Can't get down any further. Here's 
Here's where they want to replace the stone steps. So you'll obviously see those through this opening. Um, I'll get back to that in a second. But here's. How about here's, looking from um, Westchester? Westchester. Keep going to the right. That's Westchester right there. Ooh. Yeah. So I can't get down Gull Island, but this is. I just have to assume that as you're looking through their driveway, you're going to see. You know, I would imagine it's visible. I think it's yeah, going to. She also, I think she took down that building um, on Gull Island, the little one at the back. I could be wrong, but I think it's gone. No, the, the little garage is still there. This is, is Rita. It there, okay. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Or then it must be like the. But this will be visible. We were down on Gull Island, you know, a lot for MPT last summer, and you, yeah. I think you'll be able to see this. I and um, the Jetties building is um, Peabody and Stearns, and it's from 1904. Right. Oh, wow. 1904? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, all right. So I think that's considering that this is probably really visible, um, if it's visible, a bluestone patio is not appropriate for this area. Brick or more natural color stone is preferred. That's the patio. Um, and then I also said the existing, this is not existing. This is what they wanted to do. Um, but the existing is- and I said a new house on new land. It's hard to tell exactly what's existing. It looks um, like random stones. It kind of does. And I just said um, existing informal stepping stones are more appropriate than new blue stone. So, uh, and then the last part of this application is uh, this thing. They want to do um, install AC condensers next to propane tank. Can you do that? I don't think you're allowed to do that. Any? <laughs> it seems like a disaster waiting to happen. Yeah, um, Brooke, I guess, you know about the code? I, I've got a feeling there's a code problem here to do that. Here's the propane tank. Yeah. Well, I think there's also a setback problem too, but. Maybe. I think they would have to put it around the back by that bulkhead or something. The AC condensers. So this is all we get for that. Um, yeah, they can't, they can't be in the setback. It, how, how tight is the setback? Because I mean, that tight. To, to breathe. Right. It, yeah. Tight there. I think they've got, I think they have room if they want it. Um, well, you can't, you have to have it set up, like you can't put it up against anything and then it's gotta be screened with a fence that can't be up against it either, so. Well, it's just five foot setback here. I think they probably have it if they, if they need it, but I just don't think they're gonna be allowed to put it within a certain distance of the of a propane tank. I would say it's preferable for it to go beside the bulkhead behind the building. Yeah. yeah there. Here. Yeah. And they can screen it even there. What else are you going to use it for? <laughs> <laughs> back in back. AC and back. Good. All right. <clears throat> I think that was our last one. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we have on this agenda, the other, under other business, the lighting thing. And Brooke, didn't you just send something out? Uh, I sent out a, um, the, a checklist uh, revision, um, just, you know, to, it added something and I, I, uh, let me see if I saved it anywhere. So I can share it on the screen if you give me a second. Sure. Uh. I thought you sent it. I've got it here. It's Monday the 24th. You sent it to us. I can pull it up if you want. You have it? Yeah. Yeah, would you? Yep. Uh, 
So, um, did you see, do you see that? Oh, man, I got to redo this. Stop share. <clears throat> Sorry. All right. See that? Yeah. 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 Okay, so this is their existing checklist, and you're adding just that the just those words lighting plan pursuant to dark skies um and the reason like what i'm thinking there is it can be inserted into the hardscaping plans because that is mostly where we have uh lighting issues yeah. and um you know it it inserts it into the conversation and as it becomes normalized um perhaps it could migrate over to uh houses um, at some point, but I think this is probably the best place to put that. But it is a, it is a, what's, I don't remember the term I want. It is a, it's not just an initiative. It is a, a bylaw, correct? Yes. Yes, it is. So should it say dark, pursue into dark skies bylaw? Yeah, I, I don't know what the reference is. But yes, we could refer we could reference yeah, whatever it is. 139 called. dash whatever. Okay. That would be useful just for people to be able to, to find it and look at it. Yep. Yeah, with a link to the dark sky. All right. Well, let's not get into that because I'm not the people to make that. But yes, I will happily put a uh, section. But I'm I, does it get lost if it's in the hardscaping? Can it be under its own bold? Um, heading uh, as as something that is checked off for people to be aware that this does exist and they've reviewed it. I think. Can I just say something, Angus? Mm -hmm. I think it's very important. I brought this up recently at the HCC because I'm sick of people saying, "Well, it's not part of your purview," which is a bunch of hogwash. And I think. To catch people's stuff that they have to check, it's very important, is not to be washed away because somehow, somewhere, supposedly the HDC lost the ability to uh, do the electricity around walkways, pools at, around the house. And I think whatever you can get across to the public, that it is, it is on. Your checklist, our checklist is very important. So that I think would be really good. So Diane, do you think it should uh, be separated out as a separate checklist item or like I've shown it included no. in the hardscaping plan? What do you think? You do hardscaping thing. Is it better to just include it or to have a whole separate thing? I'd like to see it separate. I think it's, it has more importance than you have to check it separately. I think people will pay more attention to it that way. Yeah, I think so too. My think my too. only concern is that there are, you know, maybe there's a legal question there, be, you know, uh, um, about whether or not uh, we could separate it out, separate it out as a design component. Um, and in this way, it's just um, there as a reminder for people doing hardscape plans to. Uh, to have uh, to make sure that their lighting plans are, uh, you know, according to the bylaw. Um, so, well, I don't know whether you want to put the bylaw up, but I think that because you give them a different uh, section specifically, I don't think that is contrary to the bylaw. It's just more important information as we have done on other things but it's something that's been washed under the table for a long time and i've been on the htc for longer than most people mm -hmm. except for johnny with and i've sat there for almost 20 years and in the old days certainly going back to when dirk rogovin was chairman we always reviewed the lighting. And then somehow in the past year or so, it's been saying, oh, that's not within the AC's purview. It is within it. So however we can get it across for them to check, I think is important. Yeah, I, 
I, I completely agree. And I, and I, um, Jason or Lucy, do you have an opinion about whether this should be a separate line item checkbox or just incorporated into the hardscaping box? Uh, um, MMA is involved with the dark sky, so I'm not, I guess I can say something. I, I, I think it should be a separate piece because I think that it gets lo lost. Why well, I, I see what Brooke meant by putting it under hardscaping then then somebody might just it, think that it implies it's just for uh landscape lighting not for exterior you know like exterior lighting by doors and what have you so i think standalone would make it stand out i wonder if we could put it in both i mean have its own checkbox regarding exterior lighting but also well, that, would good. that would be good to yeah do. i think i, I just i think that the hardscaping tends to be that's where you're going to find the most offenders yep so maybe it is that we double down, we do one in number four and then put one between eight and nine because that's the end of the checklist where it's not really directly related to HDC stuff, but it does talk about planning board and other enforcement type uh, entities. And why not, put, why not put it right below the hardscaping? Cause you're gonna yeah. be looking at those right where you've got it practically. Because I don't think we should give an opinion that it's only partly maybe not really part of the HDC review that. Well, our planning board uh, things, part of the HDC review or, I mean, it's it just it seems to me like it's a separate entity just because it's an actual law. Right. So that's all. I, I, I'll go, I you know, whatever. It's easy enough to move it around on the piece of paper and yeah. redo the list. Um, but I well, think- can you do that, Brooke? Can you um, edit this a little bit? Yeah. Okay. Okay, this is the checklist. What about um, the, the notion of exterior lighting on buildings? You know, the, um, the la actual lamps on buildings. Are we to, do you want to step into that one? No. <laughs> well, no, I think that's why it needs to be its own item is that you know, lighting in the in the guidelines is is supposed to be appropriate for the structure and to have like your Nantucket house and then these like long modern lights is inappropriate. It does it's not relating or, to the house or gigantic or, pineapples. <clears throat> yeah. As somebody mm -hmm. it's well, like the houses out at Walt and Gawacki Land. They uh, we have. The way the lighting they put on either door, both sides of the door, or on the prison buildings, it is important because it's what involves the house in the area. It is important. Um, I'm running for a boat, you guys. I got to get off. But um, anyway, thank you all. All right, thanks, thank Angus. So we can talk more about this. Continue. I think I think this lighting thing is. Is big, and I also think it's it's important. I the other one I was going to bring up is Steve Thoreau mentioned the pool lighting in the yeah. interior of pools. I think that's one of those one of the worst things about the pools is the yeah. is the interior lighting. Well, especially the guy on Hussey Farm Road who's got the red, white, and blue pool lighting. Yeah, I got something <laughs> something similar to that near me, and the whole I couldn't figure out why at night the whole back of the house was like different colors, and that was what it was. It's the pool, and nobody's oh. in the pool. Nobody's in the house. They're gone. The house is not being used, and the pool lights are on. So I get to look at colored shingles. Whoa. So right, the house out in Wisconsin thing there's enough light there to light up the football field, and there's nobody there right now. Well, I think it's a good thing to, I don't know, it's a, it's a slippery slope, um, but I think, and I don't think the HGC has the stomach for it, to be honest. Uh, Diane, maybe you feel differently, but I don't know about Ray. Um, it's time to stand up and put our laws out to, for people to see. If we don't, we're going to we're going to lose it. We're going to lose what we got left. That's what I think. I, I feel very strongly about it. Sorry. I agree with you, Diane, 100%. All right, I'll, I'll redo the list and we can talk about it again. All okay. Right. 
Can we Thank go you. now, Mr. Roland? <laughs> <laughs> I can. I think that's a hit. Okay, we'll um, we'll bring this up again later. But yeah, go ahead and redo the list, Brooke. All right. All right. I think we're good for this. Thanks. Uh, thanks, everybody. Oh wait, wait. Hang on. Motion to adjourn. Yeah. But by um, second. Bruce. Okay. Right, Brooke. Oh, and do we have to approve the comments that we just said? Yes. Have... All right. Motion to approve everything we just said. Yes. 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 Thank you. All those in favor? All yes. Right. Right. Okay. All right. Bye. I think we're good. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Mickey. Thanks, Diane.